ídolo. Hey everyone and welcome to another episode of What's Wrong with Wrestling. I'm Andrew Pisano, along with Eric Slamilton Hamilton. The Hamburglar. The Hamburglar. Is in the hizzy. The hammy. The hammy. Speaking of burgers, I ate a burger today. Yeah? Went to Bernie's Burger Bus. I hope they paid you for that. Nope. But I don't know why you did it. I went to Who Gives a Shit. That's it, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, by the way, um, I know uh, I've promised in the past that we will... That the you know the intro song for the NXT show yes will be whoever is the NXT champion uh huh so um, I got a lot of shit I forgot basically and I got people reminding me on Twitter yeah hey where's all this music so here you go yeah I like it it's yeah, nice I don't know if it fits our uh, no thing but, probably you know, not fine whatever but whatever just gotta hope Velveteen Dream ever wins the uh, championship or do we hope he does win it. Velveteen Dream. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that'd be a great way to start the show. It's so porn music. It is. Yeah. yeah. So, yes, uh, NXT starts backstage with William Regal. Okay. Who says, due to Drew McIntyre's injury, we need a new number one contender for, NX- for the NXT championship. And he names himself number one contender. <laughs> and I'm the number one. And it's me. Contender. Because I'm tired of everyone regaling the title. It's my <laughs> title to regal all over it. <laughs> so he says we will have four singles matches over the next few weeks. Mm-hmm. And the winners of those matches will compete in a fatal four-way. And the winner of that fatal four-way will be the new number one contender. This wow. is this is way more work than they make anyone do on Raw or SmackDown. Yeah. Like on Raw or SmackDown, you usually don't even have to win a match. It's just like, hey... You beat him up? All right, you're the number okay, one Okay, yeah, the, you're it. That's what Samoa Joe did. Well, I mean, 205, 205 Live. 205 Live did it, that's true. Yeah, the Cruiserweight yeah. said two Fatal 4 Ways, and those winners did a singles match. True. This is kind of like the exact opposite of that. Yeah. Four singles matches, and then a Fatal 4 Way. Right. Yeah. But like when, when Strowman fought Lesnar... Mm-hmm. He, he just, didn't win a match, right? He just, he just came out, and he's like, I'm the number one contender. Yeah. yeah. Everyone's like, yeah, that's fine. Okay. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> so uh, two of these singles matches will be tonight with Killian Dane facing Trent Seven. Mm-hmm. I wonder who's going to win that match. Mm. And Cassius Ona was supposed to fight the Velveteen Dream, but he's out due to injury, so he will be replaced. I don't know. Is that legit? Like, is he? Re- I don't, it seems like they just did this just for like a surprise. Entrant? Yeah. Yeah. Because why would you even announce that? Yeah. And be like, oh, he was going to fight him, but nope. Yeah, that, that like doesn't there make was, sense. There was no, like, oh, like a week before we didn't hear Velveteen Dream was getting a yeah. match. That's like saying, like, oh, it's going to be this person versus a surprise person. Well, our surprise person's injured, <laughs> yeah, exactly. so our other surprise is this person. <laughs> That's basically well, it, yeah. Either way, it would have been a surprise. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> So uh, we start off the show with uh, the NXT Championship celebration for Andrade Cien Almas mm-hmm. with Zelina Vega, unfortunately not wearing the bathrobe. I, mean, I don't know why. It's a party, right? Yeah. Horrible. It's hor- she should be ashamed of herself. Yeah. So Zelina tells the crowd to stand for their new champion. And Almas, I feel like he really kind of shit the bed on this promo. He just yelled, I'm the champion, like 10 times. And then most of his speech was in Spanish, so I don't know what he said. That was it. And then he just leaves. So he like gendered his like his title speech. Yeah. Like, all right, if he's not good at talking, then let Zelina do the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, just let her talk. she seems to be good at talking. Yeah. That's why they pay her the big bucks. Yeah. Yeah. He just yells, I'm the champion, 10 times. And then he's like, blah, 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 blah. I think Del Rio did the same thing. Yeah, Del Rio could, could he, at least kind of did, talk. but he could also cut a promo. Yeah, he about, might be annoying about, about battles. About battles. <laughs> oh, all these God. dogs. Oh jeez, did you hear what Del Rio had to say about the breakup? No. He was like, oh, we were just, uh, you know, she was going back to WWE, and the the road schedule made it too difficult. He's like pretending that the shit we 
her didn't happen. Yeah, like, no, of course I didn't beat her for months. And... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. <laughs> you said it, pal. Yes. So uh, we have a video from earlier tonight where reporters have gathered around Lars Sullivan to get his thoughts on facing Roderick Strong in two weeks with the winner moving on to the Fatal 4-Way match. And uh, Sullivan says, Roderick Strong's one hell of a competitor. He's a handsome guy who likes who likes to talk about his family. Well, I don't have a family. <laughs> the shit. And all I care about is getting my hands on the NXT Championship in Philadelphia. So he finishes his sentence, and then all five reporters yell, Lars! 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 To try to get their next question, but it doesn't work that way. No. And when 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 I used to do this show with Josh, we used to make fun of the fact that there would only be like one reporter and they wouldn't ask any questions. It's like why yeah. are you there? Um and it seems like they've they've listened to the NXT recap or watched it. So now they have like five reporters to make it seem more realistic. Like I guess Why do they Bleacher, need reporters? I guess one of them's Bleacher Report, one of them's ESPN. We never yeah. we never see these quotes in any articles. E- on ever. Report. Ever but at okay, all. Okay, fine. At least yeah. they're trying. But but then like okay, so I cover the Rockets now. Uh-huh. I go to the Rockets locker room. Mm-hmm. And we and after the game, you know, the players take a shower and then they get dressed and then they they stand there for us to ask questions. Yeah. And Someone will ask the first question, and after, like, let's say it's James Harden, like, oh, what do you think about the game? They're like, well, it was a hard game, you know, we got through it, and we uh, we picked up the win. The the ten of us don't go, James, 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 James. <laughs> no, uh, he, we just... You just ruined my dream, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Come on. So instead, what happens, he, he, fin- he answers that question, and then whoever, and then... And then there's like a two-second pause and someone else asks a question like, oh, hey, Harden, about the... And then it just does that. We don't scream at the people. Well, Like, shit. he's right there giving the interview. Yeah, exactly. Hey, oh, Lars, Lars, Lars. Oh, hey. And then Lars looks at one guy direction. He's, uh-huh. like, he's looking at me. Oh, It's my time. It's my turn. <laughs> and then the guy who, who asked the question, you only see his hand, but he has a long microphone. And he shakes the microphone as he asks the question. As it's if like, to, so that, he's like, hey, so, Lars. So that, hey. So that the audience All knows. The it's like this. <laughs> Lars. Lars, can you please just give us an answer? Please. <laughs> he shakes the microphone so that you know which reporter is talking. What, did you, what would it mean to win the NXT championship and take over Philly? Um... So Sullivan says it would mean that I get to show the entire world that I'm the kind of superstar that I always knew that I was. Lars then tells them, that's it, guys, and walks away. And once again, they all scream, Lars, 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 Lars. And he starts to walk away. He stops, and he gives them this, like, goofy look that's, I guess, supposed to scare them. Yeah, like, so oh, he goes, nope, he's like, he's I'm like, done. He does this. He's like, they're like, scream Lars at me. It's Lars, like, Lars, Lars. <laughs> He gets a Kurt Angle texting face. <laughs> he's just like he's like, <laughs> like kind of like cross-eyed, and they're all like, Whoa. "No way, that's awesome!" Yeah. Like once they once he looks at them, they all stop. Like, oh Jesus oh, Christ! Sorry, he looked at his cross-eyed, and that's <laughs> it's just so stupid and silly. Like when it, when it first started, you made it seem like it was like. Uh, like the Dredrick Tatum interview from when he fought Homer. Yeah. Oh well, you know he's a, he's a good man, and uh, you know I really respect him. But uh, I'm gonna make orphans of his children. <laughs> yeah. uh, they have a mother. Yeah, but she'll die from grief. But I imagine she would die of grief. <laughs> uh, great episode. We yeah. should we should do a Simpsons recap. Speaking of the Simpsons, I I saw this the other day, and we're uh-huh. just we're we're just gonna do it now. Sure. Otherwise, I'll forget about it. Let's do it. Um, so I was watching The Simpsons. It was one of the tree houses of horror. Of horror? Of horrors. <laughs> um, tree yes. houses of horrors. Tree house of horror. And so it's the one where uh, the last story is uh, where they have the rocket. Uh-huh. And it's because oh, they're going to the, the Y2K yes, and yes. they're leaving. And there's the good rocket. Yeah. And there's the bad one. <laughs> well, they're showing. The yeah. <laughs> they're showing the line of people for the good rocket. And you see, you know, Michael Jordan. Yeah. Uh, you see Paul McCartney. But in between them, is that fucking Frank Grimes? 
before he was ever Frank Grimes? Was this this was before the Frank Grimes episode? Yes. Wow. That's yeah. funny. If uh, if anyone's Simpsons, it wasn't fan. Frank Grimes drawn after like one of the writers or something. I don't know. Maybe that's why they did that. Maybe they always said like the random like characters you never see are like I mean the random characters you'll see that never have any lines are just like the writers. Oh like, really? Yeah, that could be. But yeah, that definitely looks just like Frank yeah. Grimes. Yeah, it's Frank Grimes. <clears throat> hey, Grimey. Hey, so how's it going, Grimey? Uh, so next up we have Killian Dane versus Trent Seven. Mm-hmm. And of course, Killian Dane gets the win. He hits the Vader bomb. That's the first time I've seen him do the Vader bomb. Yeah. Um, it's better than his his finish. Used to be like he just runs into the guy, and it's awkward. Hmm. But he hits the Vader bomb. Hopefully, that's his new finisher. And uh, so he moves on to the Fatal Four rematch. Then we go backstage, and uh, the undisputed era brags about winning at War Games. You yeah, know, they're the best. They shocked the system. Sure, whatever that means. Right. And Adam Cole says he has a match against Alistair Black next week. And uh, O'Reilly and Fish have a shot at the tag team titles in two weeks. Mm. So, yeah. By the way, yeah, Adam Cole, especially we just recapped the um, the Raw DX Christmas episode yeah, from 97 yeah. that you uh-huh. guys should check out on Patreon. But seeing Shawn Michaels in that episode, I was like, oh, my God, he looks just like Adam Cole. Yeah, like, right. Seriously. They really do. Look like, I think someone, like, cloned Shawn Michaels. Clone. He was cloned. He was cloned. My next movie, Stone Identity 3. Because he goes to make so much more money. <laughs> <laughs> so next up, we have Ruby Riot with two T's. Two T's. Two, two T's. T's. Two T's. Versus Sonya Deville. In a no holds barred match. Whoa. Can you believe it? So they're still fighting. This is the rubber match because Ruby Riot won the previous two. <laughs> oh. Hmm. Oh, wait. Even if Sonya wins, hmm. she still lost the feud. Yeah. So Sonya works Ruby's ankle again, and Ruby makes it to the ropes, but it's no holds barred, so that. That doesn't break the hold? That doesn't really make sense. Like, it's no hold bar, no, hold, no holds barred, so you can use any move you want. But sh- that shouldn't mean that the the count isn't broken up from the ropes. Like, that's a no DQ match. Or, yeah. But no, no holds barred, no DQ, false count anywhere. They're all the same match, pretty much. Like, it's all no rules. They just have different names for all of them. You know? Yeah. So, yeah. It's a way to make it sound different and interesting while actually doing like, nothing Like, oh, now she can do the ankle lock. Well, she always could do the ankle lock. Yeah. You just don't have a rope break now. Exactly. But that's like a... I, I don't know. So Ruby dives onto Sonya outside the ring. She throws Sonya back in the ring, but when Ruby gets back in, she gets on the apron. Sonya kicks Ruby in the face and puts her in the triangle submission... Uh, with Ruby's legs hanging on the ropes. That was a cool image. Like, yeah. she had her in the submission. Ruby's, like, hanging off the ropes. And then Ruby falls asleep, so Sonya is awarded the victory because UFC. <laughs> yes. That's it. Like, you know? Yeah. She falls asleep, and the ref's like, ring the bell, ring the bell, ding, ding, ding. So now they have to have another rematch. No. <laughs> because... Now she won one. No. Yeah. And we're this is still before Ruby debuted, so she's still working as a baby face. She still has that ow my ankle, but then on SmackDown the ankle's fine. Yes. It's uh, no more. Please. It's let's like that be parallel here. universe. Right. It was like when Bobby Roode debuted. He was a heel. He was still a heel on NXT, but a, the biggest baby face on SmackDown. Yeah. So uh backstage reporters are gathered around Ember Moon. And they're all yelling, Ember, 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 just like they did with Lars. That's uh, that's like the one thing I don't really care about in NXT is the backstage interviewing segments with reporters. Yeah. Like, they have backstage correspondence to do that. Yeah. Right. They Why do have... we need these reporters? <laughs> we don't have reporters on Raw or SmackDown. No. Ever. There's no press conferences. <laughs> Nothing. Remember when they used to do that? They did it for a few months at like after pay per views. Yeah. They would have like the press conference table 
like after WrestleMania 30, they had a they had press conferences on the network, and like or no, this was was that before the network? Uh, whatever they had bad press conferences. I think 30 was on the network. Yeah, that was the first one. Yeah. Right? And like the Shield did a press conference, like as if it was like a bat, like a basketball game just ended. It was so dumb. Yeah, they only did it for a few months, but it was really stupid. So they're all yelling at Ember. She says she accomplished her destiny at War Games, and now she wants to be the best champion in NXT history. All right. Good luck with that. Yeah. Good luck, because uh, we've had Oscar, Bobby Roode, yeah. Kevin Owens. Anyone Good luck, else? Ember. <laughs> Anyone else? <laughs> Seth Rollins, Big yeah. E. Sami Zayn, even though it was for like a month. Two weeks. <laughs> two, uh, two days. Yeah. So Billy Kay and Peyton Royce walk up, who claim to be from the iconic times, ask Ember uh, who she pinned at War Games. They, of course, remind Ember that she pinned Nikki Cross, not Peyton Royce. So Ember asks them, all right, fine, which one are you? Am I fighting next week? And they both say, Me! But then they argue over it, and Ember says, looks like we have an iconic problem. Oh. And then she's like, eh, eh, eh? And the reporters are like, yeah, fuck this. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm done. I'm like done. You can, you can see the reporters, the ones that have iPhones, are using the voice memo thing to record. Yeah. Like, they should, like one of the reporters should have been like, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, how do you delete... Once you don't want. <laughs> <laughs> what a waste of time. Yeah. Um, so Ember walks away, and then Peyton says she has unfinished business with Ember, and Billy agrees, but says, don't beat her up too bad because I want to finish her off. <laughs> hmm. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. Finish her off. Oh, yeah. Like in the match. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. Like give her a finisher. Yeah, like yeah. Like put her fist in her. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So next up, we see a video for a new superstar, and uh, it just shows someone walking towards the camera, but we can't see who it is. Mm -hmm. And then the word soon pops up with two spades two spades for the O's. Instead of O's. So uh looks like Gambit is making his debut, <laughs> which is Channing Tatum. So Channing Tatum yeah, is coming to is NXT. Coming to NXT. <laughs> no, you know who it is, right? Uh, they're saying that it's Shayna Baszler? Yeah. But it looked like a guy in that video. Oh, I know. <laughs> That's the rumor that it's Shayna Baszler. Yeah, because she's the uh, queen of spades. Uh, yeah. Uh, so she's the next women's. She's going to beat Ember. Probably. You know. Yeah. And then does Kyrie Sane beat her again like she did in the Mae Young Classic? Probably not. No. Probably not this time. No. Well, I mean, it's almost WrestleMania. You got to get that uh, that well, it's like, match going. It's like Pete, like it's like it's Tyler Bate beat Pete Dunne in the tournament. Yeah. Then beat Pete Dunne beat Tyler Bate in the, in like, you know, uh, the takeover match. Yeah. So. By the way, they're doing that rematch in two weeks. Another Pete Dunne and Tyler Bate again for the UK championship. Oh, really? Yeah. On hmm. the next team. Those guys are really good wrestlers. Yeah, they are. Yeah. But I don't Tyler Bate uh, I guess he pinned him in a tag team match. I don't know if that qualifies for a title shot. It does. It does. Okay. Yeah. You, you know, you got pin the champ to But see this is the problem like they keep going back to that same match because it seems like they're not confident with anyone else for that That's why you should make the UK title up for grabs for anyone. Yeah. You know? Well, what about the uh the other guy um Mark Andrews? Mark Andrews. He's, I guess eventually he's pretty good. He'll get one. I, I hope so. We'll see. Because you got to keep it fresh, too. So. Fresh. Cream fresh. Cream fresh. By the way, um, you, you brought up some random things, so I'm going to do it, too. I was in Kroger yesterday. And you know how they have, like, the samples, you know? Okay. Like, you know, food samples or yeah, sometimes yeah, yeah. there's, like, wine samples. Like, oh, try this wine. Yeah. They had A&W root beer samples what? Look at the, what like the what like i think the word's out right like people know about a and w root beer by yeah now. were they this wasn't finished though no <laughs> well they were just giving little cups of root beer yeah like try this it's the new thing no it's been around forever <laughs> like i was like oh well maybe they're gonna do like use certain ice cream and make like a little root beer float there wasn't any ice cream there huh 
Who's that? Try the root beer. Yeah. A and W. It's been out for a long time. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Like if anyone, you know, like you either like it or you don't. There's even point. like A and W restaurants or yeah. like fast food. Right. Yeah. Like you even like you either like root beer or you don't at this point. Yeah. And A and W's A and W's the best one of like the main brands. Like yeah. IBC is the best. You know? No. No? St. Arnold's root beer. I said the main ones. The main ones. Like Okay, yeah, I'll go with IBC. But no, St. Arnold's is great. I yeah. love St. Arnold's. Yeah. St. Arnold's and IBC are the two best. Yeah. Like, if, Barks is shit. If any of you are ever in Houston and you get a chance to have St. Arnold's root beer, it's one of our breweries, and they make root at beer. The, like, see, I've I've bought it at the stores. Yeah. And it's not as good. No. You, at the brewery, it's at like the 10 brewery, times like, better. At the brewery, like, out of the tap, so much better. That's all I've done. The last couple of times I went to St. Arnold's with my friends, and they were like, oh, it's $15 to drink, you know, and I was like, and I just tell the, the woman, I'm like, I just want the root beer. And she was like, okay, just go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> I just had I just had the yeah. root beer. Yeah, it's free for root beer. Yeah. Oh, you root beer drinkers. And it's, it's free at Kroger, too, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, for our main event, we have Cassius Ono versus Johnny Gargano. Uh-huh. He's the, oh, I mean, he's the surprise wrestler, Johnny Wrestling Gargano. In for, I, th- I thought Cassius Ono was injured. No, no, Velveteen was injured. Oh, Velveteen was injured. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So Johnny Gargano's the surprise. It seemed like the crowd knew it because they didn't react like, yeah, that much for it. I think when you were saying it earlier, you said Cassius was injured. No, no, no. Okay, moving we'll, on. We'll see. I don't know. So if, if, fine. I, owe, if I if yes, I owe you a coke. Okay. If not, you owe me uh, some coke. Uh, some root so, beer. <laughs> yeah, some root beer. So there's a long Cassius, oh no, Johnny wrestling chant yeah. after the bell rings. And it's like one person doing Cassius, oh no, <laughs> and everyone else doing Johnny wrestling. Yeah. And uh, the two shake hands uh, before the fight. I didn't know it was a cruiserweight division match. <laughs> <laughs> well. Although they stopped, They finally stopped doing that. They finally yeah. stopped with the shaking hands bullshit. Yeah. Uh, it's dumb. Yeah. Um, so Gargano went for the slingshot spear, but Ono catches him and hits him with a forearm. This was definitely an entertaining match. A lot of good spots. Yeah. Gargano would later hit the slingshot spear, but then Ono goes for a dive onto Johnny outside the ring. Gar- Gargano goes in the ring as Cassius is diving, and Cassius does this incredible flip where he flips over the ropes. He puts his hands on the apron and then does the flip onto the floor. It was crazy. Yeah. Especially for a man of his size to do that. Yeah. That was pretty awesome. Uh, Gargano then dove onto Ono outside the ring and hit a tornado DDT on the floor. Mm -hmm. Ono then hits Gargano with a 360 uh, kick, which is called a cyclone kick, and he goes for the pin. But Johnny kicks out. Ono then hits a brogue kick followed by a forearm. But Gargano kicks out of that too, which is you know, kick out city. It I mean, is what it is. Yeah, that's what it, that's how wrestling is nowadays. Uh, so Cassius can't believe what's happening, so he goes for his KO elbow finisher. But Gargano super kicks Ono's arm, then his knee, then his face, and then he does a crazy move where he jumps on Ono, spins him around, and gets him in the cross face, Mm -hmm. which is now called the Gargano Escape. I guess they just recently named it that, because that's what Ronaldo, it was either Ronaldo or uh, um, Nigel McGinnis called it the Gargano Escape. Which is weird, because... It's how he escapes from the match. I don't know. Yeah, it doesn't make sense like as a, a name for a move. Well, Ono uh, immediately taps. Yeah. He really he was like, ah, he fucking taps almost immediately. I got to get back to filming Space Jam 3. <laughs> <laughs> Which monster does he play? <laughs> so Gargano now moves on to the Fatal 4 rematch. Yep. And Ono tells Gargano, you're the man. Go get that championship. Yeah. And that's how NXT ends. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, who was your worst dressed? Uh, Killian Diaper. Killian Diaper. All right, since you went with Killian Dane, I'll go with his opponent, Trent Seven. Okay. For the second week in a row, at yeah. least. Best dressed? Iconic duo. They hot. They hot. 
stay hot. Really, Peyton Royce is hot. Yeah. Billy Cavs are moments. They both hot. All right. I'll go with Zelina Vega for the millionth time. You sure? For me. Oh, I'm sure. No no bathrobe, though. No, but she still looked good. Okay. Come on. Come on. Hey, come come we on. We saw her in person. Yeah, that's true. She looks good. <laughs> worst moment? Uh, stupid worst. reporters. Yeah. Too many reporters. Lars! 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 Feed us. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Ember, Commission Ember, Commission Ember. Best moment? Uh, I'll say Johnny Gargano moving on the tourney. Yeah, that whole match was great. It was a good match. Even yeah. though I'm not a big fan of Ono, no, and his oh no, basketball. Oh no, his basketball uniform. That flip off the apron thing. Yeah, yeah. the whole match was very entertaining. Very much so. Very much. So next week we have. Oh, fuck, is it next week we have Adam Cole versus Aleister Black? I think so. I actually don't know the spoilers on that match, but I'm if I had to guess, I would say Aleister Black wins by DQ, like the Undisputed Era attacks yeah. Aleister Black or some shit. But I'm not sure. Because I can't see them giving Aleister Black like a loss. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe he does. I don't remember who's in that. We'll see. I don't know. It seems like you would put him up with a lesser guy. Yeah. But both of them. Yeah. So they could both advance. But yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, let me pull up some fan questions. Oh, okay. Let me pull it up. James Morris, Mary Kill, Jason Jordan, or Roman Reigns? Kill both. I mean, always kill Reigns. Always just, kill Reigns. Uh, always kill Jordan. Yeah. Psycho, WWE has a bad track record when bringing up NXT stars to the main roster. This being said, do you think that Velveteen Dream's more flamboyant gimmick would work in front of the more casual main roster only fans or will he fall into obscurity like most stars? Um... I think he would fall into obscurity yeah. just because they wouldn't know who to pair him up against. Like, unless you have him, like, his He'd first... He'd probably f- join Breezango, and he'd be like, Bree Dreamongo. <laughs> Bree Dreamongo? Yeah. He would probably... His f- first feud would probably be against Goldust. Right. Or Ziggler, because that's standard. <laughs> that is standard. Ziggler yeah. puts up... Puts over all the NXT talent. Yeah. Um, and then he'd probably feud with like really? Wyatt or something. Ziggler's put over, he put over Rude. Uh huh. He put over Corbin. Yeah. Yeah. Excuse me. Uh, Tyler Breeze. Didn't he put over Tyler Breeze? Didn't he put over Ty Dillinger or was that in English? No, that was English. Okay. Fuck. Who, who's Ty Dillinger? Nakamura. He's, uh, he's gone. <clears throat> yeah, Nakamura. Yeah. Is Dillinger? When was the last time we saw Dillinger? Really, Marcus Muniz. If you could put Pete Dunne in a championship match for the NXT title, who would you put as the opponent? If you could find anyone in NXT, uh, maybe Alistair Black. Yeah, that could be good. Because um, that match with Gargano that he had was really, really good. It was good. What about any? What about the main roster? Pete Dunne, Ziggler for sure. Just because you knew he'd give you a good show. Yeah. But I want him to fight someone that maybe has a chance to beat him. Because you know Ziggler's... Maybe like match. Rollins. Yeah. Maybe good. Cesaro. Yeah, Cesaro's probably the best one. Yeah. We're one of them. Uh, Alex G, will you be sending Christmas cards to WWE for giving them the What's Wrong crew so much material to work with this year? We should. I'm sure they'd love it. Yeah. <laughs> El Juano just asks, what's next for the Velveteen Dream? I don't know. <laughs> Hopefully something. Hopefully something. He, I mean, he, he had a great match at TakeOver. Yeah. Um, Pop Culture Junkie. Roman Reigns needs his own entrance music. Well, yeah. Which former WWF or WCW Superstars theme music would you assign to him? 
Goldberg. Yeah, yeah that works. <laughs> yeah. Just give him Goldberg. Just to, just to assure that Goldberg can never come back. Yes. Also, Roman needs a new look. Would you give him a haircut or lose the bulletproof vest? Um, lose the vest. Yeah, obviously. since no one's ever shooting at you, lose the vest. I, mean, I understand he's like he's a buff guy. Yeah. He didn't Why wear a vest in NXT. Body? Yeah. Why does he cover up his body? I don't know. He's got one of the buffest bodies in the business. Yeah. Usually you'd want to show that off. Like, if anyone was going to wear the vest, you'd figure it'd be Dean since he always wears a shirt. Yeah. Tim Wilson, what do you think Corey Graves could have done if he didn't get injured, saw some of his old matches, and he looked pretty badass? I never watched any of his matches. Well, they did a, they did a show on the network. Um, shit, what was it called? Uh, they kind of, like, followed NXT. That's Gravy? No. Corey Graves? No. Oh. Wasn't that? Um, <laughs> That's terrible. Let me see. I think oh, it was WWE Breaking Ground. Yeah. All right. So um, with that one, they kind of followed NXT guys for like a few months. And in the beginning, they talk about Corey Graves because I guess he had just or was about to get his third concussion. And they're having a meeting, and it's like Triple H and Michael Cole and Dusty Rhodes and, you know, all the head NXT guys. And basically at the end of the meeting, they're like, okay, so for all intents and purposes, Corey Graves is our next guy. Yeah. So he was on his way to the top of NXT. So he probably would have been there for a little while, probably had a really good main roster debut. Yeah. But He'd probably be the IC champ right now. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, Rob, if an NXT match was to be given the role of an opening... Huh? Hmm? If an NXT match was to be given the role of opening at WrestleMania... So, okay. okay. If they were... Basically, he's asking if there was an NXT match at WrestleMania. Yeah. Who would you book to have in the match? <clears throat> Probably Pete Dunne versus somebody. I would say... If he returns, Ciampa Gargano. Oh, that yeah, that would be great. That would be awesome. Yeah. Remember my idea for WrestleMania was to have Rollins and Triple H fight at TakeOver Orlando? Yes. Because that's where it all started? Yeah. And then have the title match, Rude and Nakamura at WrestleMania? That would have been cool. It would have been would've. a cool crossover. Yeah. Like, you want to see Rollins and Triple H? Yeah. You have to watch TakeOver. Yeah. Like, that'd be awesome. Yeah. And then you get so many people into fucking NXT. Right. Because people are like, ah, like a lot of people that don't watch NXT, like I originally thought before I started watching NXT, that's just a, it's another, it's a third WWE Yeah, like show a third hour. Suck. It's no, a third show that's going to suck. No, but it's like legit. Zako, do you think uh, Adam Cole will win the title at the Rumble takeover or WrestleMania takeover? I don't think he's going to fight Almas. They're not going to do a heel, no. heel uh, match for the title. Yeah. Maybe the, maybe the, you know, New Orleans take over, but I'm not sure. Yeah. He has to eventually at some point. Uh, Matt Chambers, what is Eric's favorite food? So we could ask, would he rather never eat it or take a cartwheel dick slap from Kurt Angle? <laughs> so what's your favorite food? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Like a lot of stuff. Uh, mac and cheese, I guess. Mac and cheese? Mac and cheese is like my favorite thing. Okay. Oh, no, I mean, mac and cheese is great. Don't yeah. Get me wrong. So would, so would you rather never eat it again or take a dick slap from Kurt Angle? Uh, I, I can live without ever eating it. <laughs> I'm sure. I can live without e- eating anything that I really like. You're getting the Josh questions now, so, unfortunately. Like, I've had to answer it too. Yeah, I'm I sure. Who maybe it was the Shawn Michaels dick slap? Would you rather get dick cartwheel dick slap by Shawn Michaels yeah. or Bailey? <laughs> <laughs> what? Shawn Michaels, yeah. <laughs> of course. Uh, JDX, push fire, Barry, Roman Reigns, Jason Jordan, or Vicky Guerrero. Holy shit. I think this might I'm going to let the, you take this one. This might be the first time where we have to make an exception. Push. Push Roman Reigns. <laughs> I don't. You I, son of a bitch, JDX. I'm firing Vicky. Yeah, she's the worst. Okay, the fire worst. Vicky. 
Oh. We've seen Roman Reigns at top on the top. We have. Yeah, you're right. Let's push Jason Jordan. I yeah, guess. let's let's. We've had this. Will, we're gonna have get him away from fucking Kurt Angle. He's already main main evented. Yeah, exactly. Get him away from Kurt Angle. Have him turn on Angle, and you know that's it. Yeah. Um, we've already seen Roman main event three WrestleManias, and none of and them were good. And he sucked them all. Yeah. <laughs> they all sucked. Yeah. At least Jason Jordan can wrestle. Yeah. Roman can't really do either. No. I mean, look, Roman can wrestle. He can wrestle a match, but they're it's boring most of the time. Yeah. Unless like unless he's match. got like a uh, yeah. Oh, sorry, am I boring you? No, no, I woke up too early. Commission A. Uh, all right, let's um, let's see. We've got a couple more. Brad Cunningham, next WWE Universal Champion that is currently on the NXT roster, excluding McIntyre. Who would they make WWE Champion? Um, Adam Cole. Maybe. He's very small. So? They could have Rey Mysterio. Yeah, I guess. All right. Uh, Nathan Papalardo. Would you rather binge watch an entire season of Christy Knows Best or eat nothing but Little Caesars pizza for a week? How long is a season of Christy Knows Best? Eat nothing but Little Caesars pizza for a week? Fuck. Ugh. What is like a season, like 20 episodes for a reality 15, show? 15, 20, 18, I don't know. 20 half hour episodes. Let's see. Let's see. Because oh. we could, this could be totally. It's like a few days, right? Yeah. Binge watching or. Probably not even. Or two days. Let's see. Ugh. Chris. <laughs> we'll get back to that one. Andre, uh, how weird is it that Kurt Angle can't stand up straight? His knees are always weirdly bent. This may be a repeat question. Yeah, we've talked about this. It's awkward. Uh, Dean Cherry, who would you rather have as a new stepdad? The fat guy from Heavy Machinery, Pete Dunne, or the Velveteen Dream? What? Pete Dunne. Yeah. Duh. Dunn. I mean, he's going to beat you. Yeah. Uh, Velveteen Dream will rape you. Yeah. And Heavy Machinery will... Just like, yeah, I don't know. It'd be weird. <sighs> okay, well, I guess, so back to the, the Chrisley thing. Yeah. It depends on what season you have to watch. Okay. Season well, the first season's always short. Yes. You know. First season was eight episodes. Yeah, let's do that one. <laughs> Second season was 13. Uh-huh. Third season was 20. And fourth season was 26. Oh, no. Yeah. Little Caesars it is. <laughs> uh, Robert McNeely, can you explain in kayfabe why Absolution and the Riot Squad didn't get involved in the No Holds Barred match? Simple, Robert. They filmed it before those things were things. Yeah. Before there was an Absolution. Yeah. Or any of that stuff. Yeah. All right. All right. That's all for the fan questions. So that's all for the show. So make sure you subscribe to our podcast and Apple. No, we didn't got... have things to talk about. Well, what, do you have anything? No. We kind of just talked about A and W root beer and some Simpsons. Simpsons. <laughs> so uh, subscribe to the podcast on an Apple Podcast, Google yeah. Play, Stitcher, Podbean, all that stuff. Grinder, uh, huh? Far Grinder, Farmers Only, Grinder, yeah. Christian yeah. Mingle, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, check out. Make sure you promote it on all of those. Yeah. Check out our website. What's wrong with wrestling .com. Like the show on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at wrong uh, at wrong wrestling. You can also follow me on Twitter at Andrew Bazzano. <gasps> and you can follow me on Twitter at Eric. What's wrong? And Instagram at es4 awesome. <gasps> uh. And. You can also donate to the show. Patreon.com slash what's wrong with wrestling. Buy a t shirt, pro wrestling tees.com slash what's wrong with wrestling. Yes. So if you're a Patreon. Yeah. 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 So today we recorded Classic Raw yes. from 1997. Yep. Check that and out. And last week we did Movie Recap. Santa's a little helper. Starring The Miz. If you're a $5 Patreon or more. You get to see those. You do. Exclusive. They are glorious. Give it a shot. See uh, see if you like it. Yeah. I think you will. Yeah. I think.
think you will. It's good stuff. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot more fun. We're not as depressed. Yeah. Because- Half the price of the network, much better content. <laughs> exactly. Because <laughs> we make fun of the content that's on the network. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah. And of course, thank you to Song Finch for our theme song. And uh, we're out of here. Uh, yep. Look for the Baller Club t shirts. Baller Club. Baller Club. We're most likely going to be doing the campaign on Booster or whatever they're calling themselves now. I yeah. I forgot they changed it, but look for it there. Yeah. We can't sell it on Pro Wrestling Tees. So look for the Baller Club t shirts. Because we can't make fun of wrestling, apparently. Nope. Fuck. So, yeah, look for that, and we'll see you next week. Okay. Okay. Just a troll.